That's all right. Mm -hmm. Playwright Ben Johnson once said of William Shakespeare, he was not of an age, but for all time. There's no denying that Shakespeare's had an appeal for countless audiences worldwide. However, what's not often explored is how his works can impact the individual. Author and actor Jim DeVita discusses how his experiences with Shakespeare's plays started him on a journey of self-discovery which eventually led to the realization that Shakespeare's plays have stood the test of time, not because he felt anything differently than we do, but because he captured people's emotions better than anyone else. In Acting Shakespeare by Jim DeVita. After I graduated the university, I was about 28, I joined the Actors Union, and right out of school, I got a job touring in an avant-garde production of Shakespeare's King Lear, adapted by a Japanese director. I was playing Oswald, or... Oswaldo-san! <laughs> That's what they called me in Japan. We were all American actors, and we toured in Japan and around the United States, and it was a big hit everywhere. Great reviews, Time Magazine, first big success. And when we toured in Massachusetts, my mom and dad drove out from the island to see it, and after the show, there's this huge reception. Crowded lobby, people taking pictures, champagne, ice sculptures, the whole deal, and through the middle of all this, I see my father walking towards me. Jimmy! Jimmy, this is just great! Look at it! Everybody loves it! Congratulations! Thanks, Dad. Did you like it? Did I like it? What are you talking about? Look at it! Everybody liked it! This is amazing! Did you like it, Dad? Well, come on! What's the matter what I like? You know me! I just... I don't think I'm smart enough to understand this stuff. That's it. Doesn't mean it's not good. I've gotten my share of bad reviews in my life, but never anything like that. I was mortified. Here was a man who came to see a play and left the theater feeling smaller than when he went in, like, like he was stupid, like he didn't belong there. Exactly the thing I never wanted to do as an actor. This is five years now of studying and training and performing, and I didn't feel any closer to the thing I was after. This talking thing. Just trying to get people to understand me. Just trying to be honest. To be honest, as this world goes, is to be one man picked out of 10,000. That's from Hamlet. I'd like to step a little deeper into this question of honesty we've been talking about and admit something which I've never told anyone before. Most of the characters that I play are taller than me. It's true, they are. I think theater should have little signs like on the side mirrors of cars that say actors on stage may appear larger than they really are. Because we do. We are. We're bigger up here. The emotions are bigger. The situations are bigger. The at stakeness of life is bigger. And I'm always weirdly embarrassed whenever I meet people in the lobby after a show because I think they must be expecting some huge, vivid figure to go strutting by and, like, it's just me. <laughs> and sometimes I'm not wearing my boots, and that makes me look even shorter. It's rather shocking for the moment. I know the look chew in their eyes. I see it every time. It's, um... I'm gonna try and do it for you. Oh my god, you were really, really good in the show. You were really, really good. Okay, I exaggerate a little bit, but not much. But I understand it, because people see actors inhabit these remarkable characters, but it's an illusion. And a wonderful illusion, because that's really magic. There is no magic in the lobby. I was performing Hamlet once on an outdoor stage. It was a matinee, I remember, because it was daylight, and I was in the scene where Hamlet sees his father's ghost. And near the end of the scene, the ghost is exiting up an aisle right through the middle of the audience. And, of course, as Hamlet, I'm riveted on this image of my father's spirit moving away from me. And I can see the audience very clearly, just like I see all of you right now. And the ghost was about halfway up the aisle when he stops and says his last line to me, which is, Adieu, adieu, Hamlet, remember me. And as he said this, in a seat right on the edge of the aisle, I think I see my father. 
sitting in the audience. I think I see him. He's just watching me. I can feel him. And every cell in my body wants to break character and look over there, but I can't because there's like a thousand people watching the scene between Hamlet and his father's ghost. And I'm the only one on stage and my mind is going, of course, it's not your father. He's dead. He passed away years ago. Remember thee? I, that poor ghost, while memory holds a seat in this distracted globe. Yeah. From the table of my memory, I'll wipe away all trivial, fond records, and thy commandment all alone shall live within the book and volume of my brain, unmixed with baser matter. Yes, my heaven! Now to my word, it is adieu, adieu. Remember me. I have spun it. And for the rest of the play, I could not shake that image which happened to be perfectly appropriate for Hamlet, thinking that every time he turned around, he might see his father again. And of course, in every scene, I wanted to look over there, but I couldn't. And then finally, at curtain call, I scanned that aisle up and down, and I didn't see anyone who looked anything like my father. There are more things in heaven and earth than are dreamt of in our philosophy. All I can say, after almost 25 years of trying to do this work well, is that I believe, in my heart, that there's a deep, deep connection between all of us and Shakespeare when what's said between us is both honest and understood. And I don't think that's because Shakespeare ever felt anything original. He never felt anything that you or I haven't felt. He just described it better. But there's something so satisfying about hearing somebody finally put into words the things we know are true, the things we feel in our hearts but can't always express. <laughs> and when we hear it, when we hear it made real, it's like, yes, yes, I know that. I feel that. That's me. And we recognize ourselves in him. And that, I think, was Shakespeare's true gift. He wrote us. He includes all of us in the question of what it is to be human. Of what it is to be or not to be. That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them. Thank you, on behalf of the entire cast.